Sonic yeah. looks objectively better. This is the very first CGI character on film. Oh, he's gonna surf it? <laughs> Green screen! So the biggest thing that was changed. Thanks to Trade for sponsoring today's video. Stay tuned to the end so you can find out how you can save 30% off your first coffee. Hi, welcome back to another episode of VFX Artists React. We have a special emergency segment we had to do because the new Sonic trailer just dropped. And you know what? VFX Artists React was born from the ashes of the old Sonic trailer. <laughs> ah! <laughs> disgusting. So let's do it, guys. Sonic yeah. looks objectively better. Yeah, he's I cute. Agree. Look at those eyes, man. It's all about the eyes. They were all beady before. It feels more appropriate. Like, he's a cartoon character. Yeah. Do you remember his teeth? Remember in, his in human a, teeth? He was also <laughs> just so emotionless, and now he actually has emotion. Yeah, he's goofy. Yeah. They've shown a lot more of the movie in this trailer. The first trailer is lacking a lot of the humor and just, like, quirkiness that this one has. So should we get out of here? Yeah, time to go. Dude, totally. is he dead? Just, like, impaled with a <laughs> <Just> like, <laughs> So the biggest thing that was changed were the eyes. And they're more expressive, but they also dialed back the fur. Yeah, actually, I noticed that on the mouth. So if you look at this before and after, which is a pretty amazing photo in and of itself. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> That's also... what we were dealing with? <laughs> You'll see he still has like the fur going up and over his eyebrows here, but in the original design, you can see all the highlights, the individual actual hairs specifically are catching <clears throat> light. Technically they're quills. Oh, okay. <laughs> they also gave Sonic actual gloves versus just white furry yes. hands. Big, overly exaggerated sized shoes Dude, and so socks. Weird. You know the thing that stands out to me? The green of his eyes. I wondered if you were gonna mention it. <laughs> the green of his eyes is way more saturated than the most saturated green that's in the scene. It's, it's uh, less saturated now. It's less saturated and it's a little bit warmer. Okay. Look at the tone of the green of his eyes the green on the rubber bands, but they're all in the same color space. In fact, the most saturated thing is his blue, and even then the blue kind of rolls off to a desaturation as it gets brighter towards the edges of his head. And it's much more accurately mimicking the color response of the camera. You need to <laughs> obey the physical rules of your camera with your CG footage if you want it to look real. So when we, when we broke down the first Sonic trailer, okay. we talked about the bloom from lightning. That blue glow from the lightning, the camera would never capture it like that. Even though the camera's exposed way down to the point where the clouds aren't even white, there's still glow coming through that electricity, which you wouldn't get. So bloom happens when a light is so bright that it diffuses as it goes through the lens of the camera and also as it hits some of the other elements as well. It's like if we look at the old Sonic the Hedgehog trailer, there's a ton of bloom on that lightning. Now if we look at the new Sonic and we look at that lightning, the bloom is brought way more down. So the lightning is bright, but it's not like it's any brighter than the sun yeah. or the sky that's you know giving us brightness behind it. In fact, you can kind of see the lightning over the sky right there, and it's just a little bit brighter than the sky. On top of you know recreating Sonic himself, I do think they ended up probably having to scrap all of the original animation. I would because agree. I don't think you can just retarget the skeleton to this new model, especially since it seems most of the animation is in the face. Yeah, not to mention, even if you could retarget the animation, it's been a whole character redesign. It's, a, it's as if they recast him. Like, yeah, the new exactly. Sonic is way more expressive and way more cartoony. And you can't just, your old animation, if it's not cartoony and that expressive, it's not just going to transfer. A lot of people online were kind of concerned that they're having to redesign Sonic. That means all of these artists are going to end up being overworked, trying to like crunch and they have to scrap everything. But they also delayed the release of this movie by over four months. Mm -hmm. So they actually finished shooting this movie in October of 2018. That gives them approximately four or five months to do all the effects that ended up going into the trailer. Usually when the first trailer for a movie drops, all the effects you see are literally pretty much the only effects that have been completed <laughs> up until that point. So it's about the same amount of time that they had that was added on top of it. So as far as an overall production schedule, things got shifted rather well. I'm happy to see that there's an improvement. I'm happy to see that they're actually making good use of their time. I hope we didn't hurt their feelings too bad with our very first VFX artist React video. I don't, I don't think we were nearly as mean as the rest of the internet were. <laughs> it was disgusting. And now, we're going to switch clothes for no reason. Clint, have you ever seen young Sherlock Holmes before? No, of course not. Okay, let's just see what your thoughts are on okay. this. Okay. Right, this movie came out in 1985. Whoa, whoa. Whoa, that's awesome. Man, that must have been mind-blowing. So Clint, this is the very first CGI character on film really? ever made. Kind of. Really? I mean, they had CGI characters they had done, but this is the first one where it's a CGI character brought into- Into live-action photography, yeah. yeah. Dude. Oh, this is sick. 
No, this is great. Like, they're not trying to make something that looks real. Dude, the way it jumps out of the stained glass window is awesome. The way it's like warping and then it just that's And also so notice cool. the motion blur. That was yeah. like brand new oh, that's right. technology they at the time motion blur too. Yeah. <laughs> and it was all just through coding. They're like, uh, frame here, frame here, interpolate everything in between and blur it out. Yeah. Look at that, it's got shadows. It's got, yeah. it has shadows and the everything. The shadows, they weren't able to render the shadows back then. They didn't have any sort of system for shadows. So those shadows were actually hand, hand animated yeah. into the scene. Yeah. This was a groundbreaking visual effect at the time. This was actually pioneered by Dennis Mirren and John Lasseter. Dennis Mirren, who is a legend of visual effects, he has the most Academy Awards of any living person on the planet. Wow. He's also the first visual effects artist to ever receive an Academy Award. And John Lasseter is the man who went on to found Pixar. Exactly. In fact, this uh, scene right here, they spent six months working on the 10 seconds of footage you see of the stained glass man. Oh. They pioneered a whole bunch of new uh, rendering techniques. They actually like sculpted some of these pieces in clay and used uh, a Polyhemus three space digitizer. It's basically a wand that you basically move it through 3D space and it records point coordinates. Like a photo scanner thing? It's, it's a super rudimentary version of that. You're literally just getting coordinates though. Because back like, in the day when they're doing 3D animation, like there was no Autodesk, there was no Maya, there was no Cinema 4D, there was no Blender. What the heck did they do? They literally made it themselves. Like they're using raw math. Yeah, they're, they're doing like, like coding for this. So oh my god. They, you had to sit there, do the math for all the translations of all the vector points, and then punch it in the computer and wait a while and hopefully it looks Looks okay. I mean, you can do 3D modeling with a pencil and paper by writing out X, Y, and Z coordinates yeah. and plotting them. And that's to the point what they're doing here with that model. Mm -hmm. yeah. And John Lasseter actually painted all of what you see there. He painted the texture map for the night. Sick. So ILM actually did the effects for this movie and shortly after this movie came out, it was a bit of a lackluster box office release. They actually sold that section of the company to Steve Jobs and that's what became Pixar. And shortly after this, they did a whole short film that won like 30 awards and that went on to become like the very famous Pixar logo. So real quick, we have 2,971,000 subscribers right now. Oh wow. We are 29,000 subscribers away from three million. Holy crap. 42 and a half percent of people that watch this channel are not subscribed. If you are not subscribed and you subscribe now, you can help us hit three million and we will have a really cool party. Really? Sweet. <laughs> oh, it's the Flash TV show. Okay. <laughs> dude, that's how you run if you're a robot, dude. <laughs> He's a Terminator. This actually Whoa. doesn't look too bad for a TV show. Whoa. Yeah, this, Wait, that's pretty is cool. is that all CG? I think that's all CG. I think that's that was entirely CG. That's Whoa. all CG right there. Yeah. Whoa, that was <laughs> one look at the face, as usual. <laughs> but it's pretty sweet. Yeah, it's not this that bad. This is pretty bad. sweet so far. Like that one shot was a little ballsy to make it 100% CG, but all the other stuff looked pretty good. The only thing that got me was the camera movement. You have no bounds. You can place the camera anywhere and do anything. Movie magic. I do kind of like the orange uh, glow effects though. Yeah. yeah. Right here, you can see the light flickering, casting a shadow all over the place on the windowsill. To have the CG light animated with the flickering lightning really makes the CG look good and brings the scenes to life. But then the second thing is they have real shots that they have lightning in, so they had to go and paint the light in by hand, and they did a really good job of it. This one, decent looking, not too bad, but this one, when the guy runs up, looks really good with the way the light is cast on the ground and the walls around him. They did a great job blending the light. It casts the shadows nicely. The guy's foot, the Flash's like left foot that's sitting on the ground still gets a little bit of shadow cast from the orange light, but it's like oh, yeah, you're right. soft and rounded out well. The super subtle camera shake, just like little, just the tiniest of rumbles. Yeah. Really elevates the shot with a, a certain amount of energy that it really needs for someone coming out of light speed. So how would you guys compare this to the shots from Supergirl that we looked at like a week ago? This is this like is leagues like, better, leagues better. Yeah, yeah, this like actually not that bad, but also the filmmaking's quite a bit better too. It's not just about like adding effects onto something, it's also like how are the effects motivated from the filmmaking perspective? So like compared to Supergirl where there's like awkward reanimated retime stuff, the camera is all like doing really cool stuff. The rendering's great. They're using like good photo real rendering and good like lighting techniques. It definitely feels like there's a bit of a, a budget priority <laughs> here. So all in all, Nice work, The Flash. I've seen some stuff that's a little on the CG side, but you know what? To do like full CG characters for a TV shows, kind of gutsy. I gotta commend them for it. Shows are hard to do visual effects for because the budget is way more stretched out. Lose them! Get him a bar tail! Oh, Adventures of Tintin. Didn't Spielberg direct this? Faster, you idiot! Faster! Is that Spielberg? <laughs> <laughs> what? That what? tank is driving a building. By the way, guys, 
It hasn't cut yet. Yeah, I did notice that. This is all one long take. We thought our boss town renders were long. The reason one take here is not trivial is because, think about a video game. You don't have so many textures, so many characters on the screen at the same time because there's only a certain amount of memory in your computer. When it comes to 3D animation, you can usually access more of your computer's memory, but there's still only a limited amount of memory in your computer. So how do you have a world that has 100 characters in it, 1,000 buildings, 800 physics simulations with smoke and water and all that kind of stuff, fountains all over the place, clothing simulations all over the place. Like, how do you bring that all together in one shot? And that's one of the most technically impressive things about this, is that but it's element after element after element all being set up individually and then being brought together in what looks like one long shot. Basically, artists have to go in and then little by little they build up pieces of it on like individual simulations or setups or environments and they render them all out one by one. They just put it all together layer by layer. Here's all the high level things happening in this thing. We have rigid body physics, aka hard things that bounce off of each other. We have cloth physics. We have soft body physics with the paper. We have feather physics, water, surface water, you have splashes, and you have foam. Foam simulation is another thing that's kind of crazy a lot of people take for granted. Rag dolls as characters being influenced by each other. We have hand animation and mocap animation that needs to drive physics, but one isn't physics and the other one is, so it's really easy to break things. <laughs> curry powder simulation? We have curry powder simulation. Good boy simulation. Good boy simulation. We have exhilarating story simulation. <laughs> <laughs> if you guys have a movie that has some cool visual effects, you're like, how did they do that? Go ahead and leave a comment on what that movie is. We'll see it, we'll read it, and we'll react to it right here, because we love reacting to VFX. Wait, is this, this is the one with the, the space, the space laser. This is Gears of War. This is Gears of War. Boing. Oh. What was that? That was. <laughs> oh, the camera's moving in. Oh, no. no. Oh, no. this is the worst. <laughs> this is the worst. So they're slowing this down and they're only doing so by duplicating a frame. So you see how it's like move, move, stop, move, move, stop, move, move, stop. What's happening here is you're seeing a slow motion shot but it's clearly fake digital slow motion because the camera motion itself is still at 24 frames per second, even though the shot itself is at like 18 or 16 frames per second. Oh, what's, what plan does James Bond have here? Snowboard sun, triple black diamond. Oh, he's gonna surf it? <laughs> Okay, he's surfing it. Little tsunami. He's, Green he's surfing with the. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, this doesn't look very good. Well, the water actually looks pretty good. It does, but the ice looks super fake. And then right here, <laughs> he just did like a body <laughs> lift with his arms from here yeah. to there. <laughs> As if going off a jump somehow makes your parachute go up with you. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> That's a great point. So a couple things that stand out to me visually on this thing. One, the super CG ice, just like blatantly CG ice. CG ice? The shadows are a little weird. The green screening. Oh, the green, you can always tell. The weird it's green screen. Honestly, that's the thing that like kind of falls apart for me most are all the, these close up shots of Pierce Brosnan, which I get, you gotta have the reaction shots of your hero, but it's just so obviously like disassociated from what's happening behind him. He looks like a weatherman <laughs> in front of a, a, like a green screen pointing at like, and over here we got flooding and ice. Everything is blue, by the way, in the frame, except for that yellow parachute, I guess. And then if you go to Pierce Brosnan, nothing's blue. <laughs> he has no blue light, no blue edge. Yeah, and there's some just awkward light wrap being improperly used. So light wrap, really handy tool, really common tool for green screening. Basically, it's to wrap some light from your background around your actor. The problem is, Light wrap only makes sense when something behind you is bright. So for example, the sky should be blooming or glowing and that should be the light wrap around his arm. But there's nothing bright on the bottom right or the bottom left for that matter and we're still getting light wrap. It just really makes it feel like you're watching a bunch of filters being put on footage in After Effects. So all those blue glaciers and pieces of ice rushing by, especially the bright white ones that are reflecting a lot of light, we should be seeing the, these colored lights basically whooshing by Pierce Brosnan's face. And all you need to do is on set have, you know, one of your gaffers take a light and kind of go like this or like move a reflector around. But there's none of that happening with Pierce Brosnan here. <laughs> what was the scene we just watched? What was with his legs? Like, he was like, gonna land it. And he was like, no, I'm gonna like. And he's like, okay, I'll land it. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> trade is. All right, guys, we're here to talk to you about trade coffee. Now, they sent us a bunch of boxes, and we're gonna crack them open here, and we're gonna tell you about the smells. Oh, I got the chronic super dank. <laughs> super dank coffee? I got without the love. 
metric coffee. Yo, I'm gonna, I'm gonna open this up. I wanna yeah. actually like yeah. smell this coffee. Right, Visual effects artists react to coffee smells. Here we Wait, go. How did... <gasps> oh, oh. Oh. It smelled a little sweet, and then I looked on the side of the bag and it said maple. <sighs> it reminds me of a library. It's got that comforting, warm feeling. It smells like I'm kayaking through the bayou. So the roasters actually ethically source these beans and the supply chain is set up in such a way that the money actually makes it back to the farmers themselves. Oh, nice. Yeah. So I'm not a big coffee drinker, meaning I don't really know much about the flavor profiles of coffee. But one of the cool things about this company is that when you sign up, you take a survey and the company will send you coffees that are tailored to your taste. So whether you're just starting with coffee or you are very experienced and you know exactly what you like, these guys will send you different types of roasts from different companies that will match what flavor profiles you are looking for. Trade is giving the first 250 people who click the link in the description below 30% off their first coffee. Just use the code CORRIDOR. So big thanks to Trade for sponsoring this video. You guys can check out more about them in the description down below. All right, quick game. Whoever has the bag fall off their head last gets to keep all this coffee. Go. Oh. Clint gets it. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> Nico, it's good to have you back. I've been here um, the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I said that. You're the one who went to Texas for 10 days. I know, it's good to be back. Thanks for having me, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed that VFX reaction episode where, um, you know, I'm just basically just saying stuff and <laughs> you're never gonna use this footage. Thank you for watching. I hope you are subscribed. If you're not subscribed, please consider doing so. Holy crap, we're almost at 3 million subscribers. If I pause for a second and look back on this year, it's been crazy. So many of you are new people to this channel. Thank you for watching. So many of you have subscribed. Thank you so much. Many of you have commented. Anyways, I'll stop now. It's just been awesome. I can't wait to share more visual effects knowledge with all of you.